Let us turn to the book of Ruth. Just keep the word open. You can follow it in the Bible or in your mobile. But just go, let's go through that. Moses delivered the Israelites from Egypt and led them through the wilderness. Joshua captured the nations and, uh, in Canaan and he settled them down. After his death, judges were ruling, but just, just, uh, judges were ruling in different places at different times. That's what we see. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant was moved from place to place. It was when they, in the Exodus, Ark of the Covenant was going with the Israelites and the Lord's presence was there. But now it is, uh, um, uh, first it was kept in uh, Gilgal, then it was moved to Shiloh. It was there for a long time. And then it was moved to some other places until the temple of the Lord was built and it was settled down. Uh, and they kept it uh, there in the Jerusalem temple. Uh, no central leader or king. After Joshua, there was a leadership crisis. There was no real leader for Israel. And uh, we see that in uh, Judges 21, 25, the last verse, in those, the, there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own ways, and as he saw fit. In some uh, translation, it says, what was right in his own eyes. But in uh, RSV says, as he saw fit. Each one was having his own way. There was no real um, central leadership to guide them, and the law uh, was forgotten, and uh, no servant of God to be teaching them. So each one was having his own way. That was the background to the book of Ruth. And then in first um, chapter, when we come, we see in the days when the judges ruled. That is why I explained the background of the judges. How was the rule of uh, in, uh, judges? There was famine in the land. Word of God, Ruth 1.1 1, 1 says, in the days when judges ruled, there was famine in the land. Maybe it was a disciplinary action by the Lord. You know, God is sovereign. And everything that happens in history is also involves the discipline and the judgment of the Lord. And um, in Israel, we repeatedly see that later also, whenever the kings were following, there was peace in the land. Whenever the uh, people uh, went away from the Lord and they were captured by the neighboring nations and they were oppressed, that was the situation. Here also we see uh, the, they were, they, uh, there was a famine and uh, the response to this crisis should be, the people should be repenting, confessing their sins and turning back to the Lord. That should have been the um, response of the people. But we see here, maybe all the Israelites still, they stayed there. We, the Bible talks about only one family. We see one family from Bethlehem. It is from the place of Bethlehem, supposed to be the house of bread. Went to live for a little while in Moab. Maybe they came to know there is food in Moab. So they moved from uh, Bethlehem to Moab, which is the wrong decision. When we think about Elimelech, Naomi, uh, Mahalon, Gilon, the two sons, this family, when we moved out, we can see Naomi had made a very wrong choice. Wrong choice. She should have stayed in Bethlehem, suffered with her own people, waited on the Lord, uh, waited for God's redemption from their uh, crisis. But here she makes a wrong decision. For what? Just only one thing. There is enough food in Moab. So just let us search our lives. Where, on what direction are you going? Is it on the wrong direction? For what? What do you see? 
is the real prosperity and the wealth. And uh, this family left the people of God, left the house of uh, bread, left all the festivals of Israel, no Sabbath, no worship together, and their priority was only a worldly thing, and it is food. No place for God or faith. They, they, didn't, they lost their faith. God can take care of them, even through the crisis, even through the struggles. God can take care. That faith was not in them. That's what we see. And, and so they left the God's people, and they started walking on the wrong direction. Wrong decision, wrong direction. So how were they in the wrong direction? We see they went to live for a while. That's what the uh, verse 1 1 says again to live in Moab for a while. But they stayed continuously. They should have come back, maybe, after a few, uh, the, as they decided, we'll come back like, but they somehow got settled there. They were attracted by the world there, and they were there more than 10 years. Because Bible says, after um, they, were, uh, they went to Moab, they lived for some time, then Elimelech died, and then uh, their sons were married to Ruth and Orpha, two girls of the Moabites, and then they, after marriage, they lived there 10 years. Ten years they lived there, and so it is a long time. It is a, maybe it is five, 15 years. We don't know when you study the word of God. So, but there the fail to send. So many times, what is our priority? For what, what way we are going? We sometimes the weekends. So there is a good camp somewhere for the children to go, young people to go. But we plan our own to enjoy, to have the worldly blessings, just worldly enjoyment. We neglect. The, uh, our priority goes down. The spiritual needs are as uh, equal and much needed as the physical. So, but are we really taking care of the spiritual needs of our families? our own physical needs. What do we plan for the weekends? What do we really give priority to? Is God having a priority? Or is only money and our pleasure has the priority? It is Money is needed. God gives us. But always, if it is coming on the way of your spiritual life, it is better you can quit. You can trust the Lord and quit. God can bless you, even in that situation. You don't have to be worried. I have seen our brother. Uh, uh, he was always like that. He's a big scientist. He's a patron of uh, patent for a few inventions, and he always does any company. If they insist him to work on Sundays, he will quit. No working on Sundays. And uh, he will go to a better job. That is his testimony always. I go to a better level. God takes me to another level. So anywhere, I, when whatever comes against his convictions, he will be willing to give up. How is our conviction for God? How is our love for God? How, what is the priority for God in our lives? Are, are we able to take a stand? Are we, what, what is in our heart? What, for what do we really give, give priority? Here is this lady gave priority for the worldly things and left the God's people, and she went away. And um, second decision, wrong decision she made, wrong direction she had, was got her two sons. After her husband's death, may could have, she could have returned, but she didn't do that. She got her two sons married to Moabite uh, girls. Moabite people were worshipping the uh, god uh, Kemosh, and which was requiring child sacrifice. That was the type of people, that was the background for her, and she preferred to stay there. Got her uh, sons married, 
and she got settled there and um, she thought she can have a very joyful life over there. The Bible very clearly says, uh, the Torah says, you cannot intermingle with the aliens. You cannot marry those girls. We can see uh, Exodus 34, 16 says, you cannot, don't, uh, forbids this intermarriage. As a believer, we are also told, we cannot marry uh, the non-believer. So 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18, we see. So this morning, I want to tell you, if anyone uh, is in that way, okay, hey, I, some young people, uh, I want, I'm interested in that girl. First thing you have to see is, is she a real believer? Don't get entangled with the unbelievers. Bible for, forbids that. And you will lose a blessing. <coughs> and uh, you have to take a decision. Decision, I will look for a believer girl. I cannot marry a non-believer. That is what we see. That lady, she took the, from the Moabites, she took the girls. Naomi took the girls from the Moabite family and uh, a wrong decision, wrong direction, and it's, it's a pathway to loss. Wrong decision always leads you to loss and failure. It may look in the very nice in the beginning, but it, it, its end is loss and failure. So just search yourselves. Are you going in the right direction? Even after 10 years of marriage, they didn't have children. The two sons also died. That was the loss. When she moved out to Moa, her husband died, two sons died, and they never had children. All Both of them they didn't have children, and she had uh, enough to eat. There was plenty for what she came. It was available, but she could not enjoy any of her blessings. Many times that's our case. Many, uh, money takes the priority, and we get into the, uh, tang get entangled in these worldly affairs, and then we enjoy and enjoy, but it's not the real enjoyment. Because our life is in the Lord's hand. God doesn't want a life like that without Him. We need to come back, turn in a uh, direction towards God, and uh, we have to walk in the way that is pleasing to him. So this morning, I want to encourage each one of you, just search your hearts. What is my, uh, my decision in each step? How is it based? Is it, uh, is it giving priority to God and his kingdom? Or what, in what way, in what direction I'm walking? Um, am I walking into the kingdom of God and inheriting and walking in the kingdom of God are walking in the Satan's kingdom. Still, many uh, desires of the worldly desires push me down, and I'm not able to come out of that. Are you entangled in this way? So when she heard, so after all this crisis and struggle, when Nami heard there is food in Moab, she, she, she decides, yes, now I will go back, go back. So uh, when she decided, she turned toward the right direction. She, she heard in Moab, the Lord had come to the, that is one six I'm reading, the aid of his people by providing food for, for them, she turns to the right direction, making right decision. God is not always angry, he's compassionate. He comes to our aid. Surrender yourself to him. In times of crisis, do not try to escape the crisis. Be there. Wait upon him and wait for his deliverance. And um, pour out your heart to him. Pour out your heart to him. Whenever trouble comes, you know, when we were missionaries in uh, Maharashtra, we were working among the Kathodi tribe, and uh, there were, uh, uh, in those days, um, 90, 90 to uh, uh, 2000, 
too, we were there in, uh, in a small place. We were re- living in a village. And uh, Shivasena was ruling. So much of opposition was there. And uh, uh, people were uh, uh, threatening us. And uh, the pol- they compl- uh, lodged the complaints every time in the police station. In different police stations, the call will come, come, uh, there is complaint against you. Then we will go and uh, talk to them. Uh, I said, we, we are not doing anything. Uh, we just teach the word of God. God changed our lives. So we want this. Kathodis are the very poor tribal exploited people. And they live under drinking habits and under the power of witchcraft. And all that. So we just want to, to deliver these people and help these people to have a decent life. That's our goal. Uh, so we, we don't know. Uh, it's not the religion. We are not converting. It's not possible for us to convert people. But we only presenting Christ, who is the Lord of all, who can change lives. And uh, God can deliver them. That's what we were teaching them. And uh, there is so much. They were tra- threatening our believers. They will say, you g- give up Christ, otherwise we will cut your legs, ca- cut your hands. And that is what the local people were threatening them. And they will come running to us, what to do? Um, brother, what to do? They call Marathi Bau in, uh, for brother. And uh, that's how they call us, Bau. So Bau, what, what should we do? Uh, they are threatening us. We only said, we, we can't do anything. We cannot do anything. We can only do, yes, we can look to God. Our God is a great God. You pray, that's what we uh, prayed. And uh, whenever we hear such report, how they are threatened and how the threat is for us, we'll be little disturbed in our heart. I always will wait to come back home. And when we come back home, we'll be just crying before the Lord, committing ourselves. Lord, with the promise, you brought us here to work among these people. And now, Lord, you have to take over. And uh, when we cast all the burden on the Lord, there will be such peace. All the fear will be gone. And uh, we'll be, uh, we could stand with, uh, through all that. And God wonderfully kept us. No time they could have finished us. We were living in the villages. They could have done anything to us. But God never allowed them to do. And he helped us to plant some churches there. And the churches are still growing and now uh, we are training the local leaders um, we are in uh, the church is st- still growing so that is the way even today if you are burdened about anything you are in a crisis you have a problem in your job maybe uh, about your own job how mo- how long will will it will continue whatever crisis may be you don't have to be burdened at all because we have a loving heavenly father he cares for us all that we need to do is to go to his feet, cry to him, and he will give, give the solution to us. He gives the, repeatedly, we have experienced this, and uh, uh, I, I challenge you. you can, today you can just come to him and uh, commit all this burden into the Lord's hand, and uh, that is the way we, we cannot uh, avoid the problem. We cannot uh, run away. We could have just go, left that place and gone away. Even our mission, we were, we were working for a French missionary prayer band and that level. And uh, uh, they were asking us, no, no, you come away. Come away from that place. I said, no, God has brought us here. We, we, we said very clearly, and uh, we will continue here. And until the Lord took us away from that place, we continued there. We were not afraid and went away from that place. So that is how even in your crisis... Uh, whatever may be, just commit it to God. Wait there patiently. Hurriedly don't make decisions to leave and to give up and uh, get discouraged and uh, leave God. And God is always very good God. And so uh, then when the crisis came, she left the place where she had been living. Uh, one seven we read, set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah she took the right direction, and she not only made a decision to go back, she acted on that. So we take certain decisions, help us, uh, we should be acting on that. 
And then she says to the two daughters-in-law, uh, Orpha and Ruth, you please go back to your homes. Now there is no hope in Israel. You will be a foreigner there, alien there. They, they, nobody will respect you. Uh, of course, there is no hope for you. Nobody will marry you there. It's not easy for an Israelite to marry a Moabite girl. So you, may, you will never find a husband there. But you go back to your family, your parents, and uh, you will be able to find uh, people to marry you there. So that is how uh, she was advising her daughters-in-law. And, uh, but they know they have to go back not only to their people, uh, but to their gods, that Kemosh god. And uh, they were tired of that. You know, even after their husbands died, they were still staying with her. That means she had an attraction for the God. They had an attraction for the Lord of uh, Israel. And uh, here a time came for them to make a decision. Orpha leaves her mother-in-law and she goes back. But Ruth says, no, no, don't force me to go back. Your God is my God. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be... In this uh, idol worship, I, I believe your God is the true God, and I want to follow him. I don't care if I'll get a husband or a um, uh, home. I'm not bothered. I will be with you. That was the decision she made. She gave up everything, her family, all uh, the, her people, all his, her society, everything. She was willing to leave and go for God. Uh, just for God's sake, for her faith. She was so courageous and strong in her faith. That is the courage and faith we need today. In the coming days are very tough. And um, uh, we don't know in India what, what will happen. And uh, there is, uh, uh, anything can happen. Persecution might start. This is the time we need courage and faith to stand alone. Maybe Ruth's parents would have said, no, don't be a foolish. What will you go with, uh, get with going after this lady? You will spoil your own uh, whole, whole life. She, you will spoil. So you just come back. We'll get you married. They would have said, but Ruth was not for that. She knows. She knows the truth in her heart. Naomi's God is the true God. So even in spite of Naomi's all failures, Ruth understood their God is the true God. And she took a stand and she decided to go back. My husband's home is my home. I don't want to go back to my family. Our gods which are not the true God, she understood. And secondly, she wanted to go back. She made a decision to go back to Israel because she loved the mother-in-law. It's very rare to find such girls nowadays who love the mother-in-law. But as true Christians, how many of us can say, yes, I, I love my mother-in-law? Even the men can say, I love my mother-in-law. That is the Christian love. There are, when two families come together, we have very different backgrounds. My husband is a Maharashtrian. I'm from Tamil Nadu. I know uh, what it is. So, can we really love our in-laws? So here Ruth had a love for the mother-in-law. And she said, no, I cannot send her alone. She is old now. How will she walk all the way back to Israel, Bethlehem alone? I have to go with her. I have to be a support to her. I don't have to do anything else. I'll just be helping her, feeding her, protecting her, taking care of her. That's what she had in mind. And uh, let us search our hearts. How is our love inside the family, our in-laws, maybe even between our husband and wife? Many times we talk, um, my family, your family, your things, my, my house, your house, all that conflicts at home. But here she says, your home is my home. The husband's home is my home. So we need to be uh, no, uh, searching. Do we have that kind of love in the family? Can you love 
you, the parents of your husband, parents of your wives, and uh, show a Christian love, Christian love. It's difficult because we are from different backgrounds. But God wants us to be changed. And uh, that is the, our vocabulary has to change after marriage. Our home. Both sides have to be our home. Don't tell anymore, my home, your home. It's a self-centered life. If you live for yourself, you will be talking. Once you are married, you have to live for your husband. And uh, you, you, you will take his home as your home. And uh, let us, uh, le let the Lord fill our hearts with such love. It is through the Holy Spirit we receive that love. It, it's not, po not possible with our carnal nature. So uh, let us ask the Lord, Lord, you give me such love. I'll be able to love everybody. They, uh, their li lifestyle is very different. They, they talk, the way they talk is very irritating to me. I cannot adjust. Are you telling that? Let the Lord fill your heart with his love. And then your attitude will change. And uh, when you show love to them, they will respond. Any mother-in-law you can win, win over. Even if it is very tough, uh, don't keep on complaining to your husband. They cannot change. They are old people. But you can change. You learn to accept. You learn to love her. Whatever is uh, her interest, you try to do. Uh, don't always contradict her. And whatever is her, in, uh, whatever she likes, you make and give them. And you will be, become a daughter to her. You will become a daughter to her. Of course, I, feel, uh, I see all young people here, not many, many mothers-in-law. So even the, for the mothers-in-law, I can tell, you love. Nami loved uh, the daughters-in-law. That's why though, they prefer to stay there with her, even after the husband's death. How is our love, uh, love for our daughter-in-law? In Indian society, so much of struggle, so much of uh, suicide cases because of this. And uh, uh, let the Lord help us uh, to learn ourselves so that we can teach this in our society and with, um, uh, be a testimony among the other people. And then we say, see, Ruth was not Ruth was not following Naomi, but she was following the Lord ultimately. Her heart was on for God. 120 we see, Naomi says, Almighty has made my life bitter. You know, sometimes uh, the repentance comes very late. After all that suffered, Naomi came back when people were asking her, uh, oh, Naomi has come back. He said, no, don't call me Nami. I'm Mara. I'm bitter. God has uh, made my life bitter. Uh, and she was telling God has, uh, in a way you can say she was blaming her. But I would say she knew it was from the Lord, all that she suffered, because she had repented. She knows I, I deserve the punishment. I, I didn't uh, uh, stay back with the Lord's people. I didn't uh, love the Lord enough. Uh, I, I didn't have faith in God. I didn't wait for him to deliver us from the crisis. So she knew it was her uh, problem. That is why she, she is telling, God has made me like that now. I'm just empty-handed now. Full I went, but I have come empty-handed. So that was the um, repentance she was having. And then uh, we see the uh, Ruth making a right decision and walking in the right direction. So what was in Ruth? We'll just see a few things and I would like to close. Ruth took, she had the love for God and she loved her family and uh, she was a hard working person, industrious lady. She was an industrious lady, not lazy at all. When she went there, she, she would have said, no, 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 Atte, I, I'm, I'm afraid I cannot go out uh, with these people. I don't know how they will treat me. She never said. She told the mother-in-law, I'll go out and I will go to the fields and uh, find some job. I'll work there. You know, and when she went, uh, she, from morning till evening, she was gleaning. You know, the, uh, when it was uh, barley harvest season, when they were uh, harvesting, whatever was falling on the ground, she was 
picking up. It was allowed in Israel. God, uh, in the law itself, God has said, you leave something for the poor and the widows so that they can take and leave. So when you harvest it, don't try to take all for you. Leave something in the field fallen. So let the uh, poor and the widows collect it and uh, use it for themselves. So here, she went to do that. And uh, the word of God says she was col uh, collecting from morning till evening. So much she collected. And uh, afternoon, like the owner of the land where she went, just she went to any field like. And the owner of the land came and uh, he was Boaz. And you know the story. I don't want to be telling the story. And he uh, found out it, uh, uh, Ruth is Naomi's uh, daughter-in-law. And he greeted her. And then um, uh, he, he was told how she is working hard. Uh, and then afternoon, lunchtime, he called her and uh, shared his own uh, lunch with her, gave some bread to her. And she ate half. And she again, she kept some half for the mother-in-law. You know, that was the love she had for the mother-in-law. And uh, her story, when you read, it should move your heart. How we are, what kind of love we have, what kind of unselfishness we have. These are the things we need to search ourselves and uh, find out. Be hardworking. Whatever work you are doing, do it perfectly. And uh, though people may not... Uh, um, recognize your work immediately. God is always there. At one time, God will exalt you. So you just work hard. Don't complain. Don't try to avoid. Put the work on others. Um, and uh, even if others put on you, patiently you do. Ask the Lord's grace uh, and uh, he will help you. And then a time will come, somebody will recognize and uh, they will reward you. That is a time of uh, rewarding for all of our hard work. And, um, and that's what we need to be doing. Uh, honor, honor God through our work. Be hardworking. As ladies, we need to be hardworking at home. We work outside, but when we come back, how do we keep the house neat and clean? How do we maintain the children, discipline them, teach them, take every uh, effort uh, to give, spend time with them? and to pray for them. There is so much of need, but uh, let us not be lazy. Let us sleep less of us, but work more. Uh, some places when we go, the houses are so untidy. Take care. The Lord's presence should be there. As uh, children of God, anybody comes to your house, they should feel the presence of God. If you want the Lord to be there, your house should be always neat and clean. This is one thing from a young age. I wanted, a, from the time I was uh, staying as a single missionary, my house will be always neat and clean. People will, uh, will not go out without commenting. After marriage, anyone who comes to the house, uh, it was all just a small house we were living. First, when we went as a missionary in the village, it was a poultry uh, farm. It was divided into different rooms. And uh, you can jump from one room to another. We had uh, hired two rooms, and we were living there. You, from, to go from one room to another, you have to go through the veranda, common veranda. That was the type of house. There was no toilet. There was a river flowing. So night, 11.30, 12 o'clock, we'll go there. For, uh, I, uh, go there. It was a difficult life, but for God's sake, we were happily living in that house. And uh, But... Whenever people come, they don't understand the struggles we have in that house, we, which was not really a problem. We adjusted well, and they will say, oh, very nice house. That is the comment they will give, the way we arrange the house. Keep it neat and tidy, and I always praise God. Every Wednesday, there will be prayer in our house. There will be these tribal people coming, and we will be entertaining them, and there was room for everything. Uh, so just... Uh, be hardworking. And uh, the second thing we see is the next thing we see is the humility she had. Humility. When she saw, uh, when uh, Boaz came and she was he was talking nicely to her, you don't be afraid, you stay with here with, the, with my girls. When he said she bowed down to the 
ground. Two, second chapter, 10th verse says, Bo was talked to when Gairli, she bowed down face to the ground. And she addresses Boas, my lord, my lord. She knew her origin. She never forgot her origin. Always uh, Moabites were treated as aliens, very uh, low caste-like by the Israelites. And uh, she says uh, here, I'm, my lord, I'm not even equal to your servants. I'm only a foreigner, alien. She knows. Even I'm lower than your servants. To that extent, she was uh, humbling herself. No, no, now my husband is an Israelite. So I am uh, big. She never uh, acted like that. She uh, accepted his, uh, her uh, identity. So we need to know, many times we try to boast, whatever we have is from the Lord. Nothing is on our own. You just think about your own life. And uh, there is nothing to boast about, no, nothing to have pride about. All you have, the intelligence, the health, and the house, the wife, the family, everything is from the Lord. We are only uh, saved sinners. Spiritually also, we have nothing to boast. It is His grace, total grace. We are sinners. We were uh, living in darkness. We were away from God. Not, uh, we, we, can, uh, we had no chance to come near that holy God, but it is out of his grace. We have, God has saved us and brought us close to him, given us a status of, uh, to be called the children of God. We are now the children of God, but never forget our status. I'm only a saved sinner. Nothing to take. Many times the spiritual pride also comes. Let us keep ourselves humble. Don't think that uh, brother is not spiritual enough. I am more spiritual. Don't ever think. Whatever you are, it's God's grace. God has given you to understand better and live, uh, live a life better. Just fall at his uh, feet and worship him. There is nothing we can uh, boast about. So that is the type of humility uh, Ruth had. She knew where she came from. She doesn't deserve at all to be in Israel. But uh, God has brought, us, brought her because of her faith. Um, in the Lord, and uh, she was here humble enough, and we should, mm. you know, just last week uh, I was reading Isaiah, you know, two times it talks about the uh, brokenness, broken and contrite heart. I just wanted to read those two verses. It uh, touched my heart very much. Uh, Isaiah 57. Fifteenth verse, for this is what the high and lofty one says, he who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place. I live, God is telling, I live in a very high and holy place. And I am high and lofty. But also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit. Contrite and lonely. I live in that person who is so lowly and humble, who has a contrite heart. God cannot tolerate a proud person. So we let us have that broken heart, broken heart before the Lord. And um, I, I, I don't know, it's, time is going up. Uh, so the next we see 66.1, Isaiah 66.1, God, God is telling, I esteem him, I esteem him. I am a great one, but I esteem the one who has a contrite heart. So let us be humble, humble, learn from Ruth. Uh, always, Lord, we are getting high salaries and all that, but it's all you, Lord. Before the Lord, let us be humble. Before the people, let us be humble. humble. Many times, it's very easy for us to be humble before God. But when it comes to people, we have always a competition of a social status, how they are, how uh, we are. There is a kind of uh, competition going on in our mind, respecting people according to their social status. I think these all are not in the kingdom of God. 
Kingdom of God, there is uh, no value for prestige, power, position, and possession, and parochialism. No difference, caste difference, no class difference, no levels difference, nothing. All are equal before God. Let us have that uh, understanding very clear before us. So love the people, love the people. Being lived with us, village people, uh, many times I feel they are much, much better than the city people, the rich people. I think God will consider them the richest, the love they have, the sincerity they have. The, their many ladies are so innocent and uh, not corrupt at all. So it is that kind of, uh, they have a contrite heart. They respect us, love us so much. When we brought the gospel to us, uh, to them especially, and when they were delivered from a lot of sickness and from our evil powers, and uh, uh, Lord changed them, the drunkards were changed, and now they have a happy home. In all that situation, they are so broken, so humble. And I really praise God we had the privilege to live among such people and help us also to be not judging according to the superficial status, but love the poor people. And poor or rich, it is not, uh, doesn't make any difference before God. Then next thing we see is 3, 10 to 11. He says, Boa says, You have not run after the young men, whether rich or poor. All my fellow town men know that you are a woman of noble character. Woman of noble character. Virtuous woman. In the King James translation, in those days I was reading, it's the virtuous woman. This uh, word is, uh, another time it is used in Proverbs 31, the virtue, who can find a virtuous woman? You know, this is one thing very much needed in the modern society. You know, when I was reading all this Me Too, Me Too, how the harassments are going on. Even as Christians, we also go through, maybe, maybe a married woman or an unmarried person, but every one of us have to go through this kind of struggles in life. And uh, sometimes we willingly, voluntarily give, give in. And we come to church also, we are not, um, we are still involved in immoral activities. And in our hearts, we have a struggle. But just uh, uh, keep yourself clean. Be in that uh, cleanliness, purity of heart is one God wants. Ruth had that kind of clean, clean heart, and that's what made Boaz like her very much and to accept her as his own wife. Though she was a foreign lady, the whole town should uh, testify against her. She will not look at any man. She will not unnecessarily talk with any man. I don't think it's immediately it has happened. Through the years, he watched, and um, that is the uh, thing he found in her. I know, I know. You, you are a virtuous woman. You are a man, a woman of noble character. What kind of testimony your company people can give you? What kind of testimony your village people can, your uh, people around you can give about you? Are you a, um, a woman of noble character? Even for that matter, even men cannot be excused. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy, you consider the younger woman as your brothers, uh, sisters. And he, he considered the younger women as sisters, men as uh, brothers. That's what uh, Paul is writing to young Timothy. He's a young leader, and he is leading the church. There is always struggles and uh, temptations. He cannot fall into temptation. He cannot be tempting others. Because as, uh, uh, you know, one thing is as we Christians, when we change, we become, uh, try, to, try to love the people, we are so good, so we become very attractive for the outsiders. Many girls, they get tempted. Many boys started liking us. But how do we act? Bible clearly says you can't marry an unbeliever. So the, these are the things we should not give place. The way we dress, the way we talk. We have to be very careful. 
not to give uh, a place for others. We should not allow them to stumble and fall into sin against us. We need to be very, very careful in this matter. Uh, whenever, uh, of course, uh, in many youth and uh, uh, meetings I share, whenever you talk with a man, it is better to avoid uh, talking alone longer time. You can talk your business and uh, always you have somebody else with you. Uh, when you talk to the opposite sex, uh, be very careful. Don't talk too long. And if they start coming closer to you, you keep yourself. We become alert. At least keep a social distance of three feet. Three feet with, uh, between them. Don't get under the trap. There are many girls and boys, men, uh, Christian girls, we know. They have suffered, have fallen in love with a Hindu person, and then finally marrying. And uh, after that, they found out what kind of background they have. Many girls have, uh, I know. So we need to be very, very careful. Satan is tempting us. It's, uh, he's all out to pull us down. His target is not the non-Christians. They are his, his. We are his targets. So keep your mind clean. Protect yourself. Don't be a hindrance. The way you dress up, the way you talk, it should not be an attracting a man. Okay, it has become a fashion. We think we are successful when we can attract the uh, people of other sex, but not according to the word of God. You love, be with the uh, sisters, wait for the Lord. If you ha show little, you find if there is anyone, man or woman, God-fearing, you pray about it and inform your parents, inform the eldest pastor, and in his, uh, God's own time, if it is your will, let him lead you. Otherwise, you have to be very, very careful. Don't uh, end up in a lot of confusion in your life. Spoil your life, spoil your character. And uh, it's a very, very difficult thing for you to come out. And you will be regretting it later. Uh, and uh, you concentrate on your work. So in right direction, right, right decision, right direction, lead to pathway of, uh, lead to abundant life. It, it is a pathway to abundant life. That's what I wanted to tell a few things and finish it. Uh, what is the abundant life here? She had the favor of God. You know, the very way God, God was in control. He took them at the right time. When the barley harvest was um, going on, Go, she, right time. Otherwise, in any other time, she wouldn't have had food to eat. She could go and glean and get some food. And then uh, again, he was uh, gracious, providing, Boaz was providing. So she had the favor of God at the right time they went. And God directed her to the right field. He knew her future. So she, he knew her heart and he had already chosen her and he was leading her. So that is what God say, does it. When we keep our life humble, pure, uh, we walk in the right direction and he, his favor is on us. Every step he leads us. And um, uh, so uh, then we see the protection she received. God protects us in every difficult situation. I can say how the Lord protected us. Uh, we were usually we finished the meetings at 12 o'clock and they will come, we used to come back by motorcycle in those days. And uh, uh, people, uh, our house owner is a Hindu man. He, he, he has called us and said, please, people are all against you. Do, please, before, before 9 o'clock, you should be at home. You cannot come after 9 o'clock. Uh, he told us. But we said, no, the people are available at home at 8 o'clock only. We have to talk to them and we have to lead them. They come after work and they have to eat. Then only we have the meeting with them. We can uh, talk to them. So... Um, it's not possible for us and our God will protect us. And we used to come back home at 11.30, 12, 12.30. And God was our protection. God uh, protects us. And uh, when we walk in the right ways, God always protects us. And uh, here, see, uh, very wonderful to see, uh, read. He says, 2.8, he says, don't go anywhere. I have commanded men not to touch you. 2.9 says, don't go anywhere, you go, 
we work along with my ladies, my, my girls there in my field only. Don't go to anybody for the protect. He was so much concerned. Bovas was concerned about her protection. And 2.9, he says, I have commanded the men not to touch you. Nobody can touch you, you know, because 2.12 uh, says, she took refuge under the wings of God of Israel. You have come under the, um, and the wings of the God Almighty. So uh, God will protect you. You will be rewarded and do not, uh, and he tells the men again, do not rebuke her when she is gleaning also. You just leave some for her. Don't, uh, uh, don't rebuke her in any way. You know, it's so wonderful how, how God takes care. So when we follow him, God will give you the protection. God will talk for you in your own uh, office. Maybe someone is really putting you down. You are going through a struggle. But somebody else will be there to help you, to talk for you. Um, and uh, God is so good. And then he, she received provision. We know he says, uh, Bova says when she went to the field, uh, the men bring water and keep. You go and drink. Then when the lunch time, he shares his bread with her. And then later on, we see when she, according to them, uh, obeying her mother-in-law, she comes to um, uh, propose herself. In the night when she comes, he sends her with uh, uh, bushels of barley. So all their needs were taken care. Ultimately, God provided the husband for her and uh, all his riches was hers. That's what uh, our God does. All the riches he has is going to be our, uh, ours. He has kept that eternal life. Only when we see in the Old Testament stories, all the worldly blessings. But in the New Testament, we have to so much to rejoice because all the heavenly blessings are ours. God is going to take control and God is going to bless us abundantly. She found a husband, found a home, and they had a child. That is the next blessing. That is the pathway to abundant life. Barren became fruitful. Got a name because of her character. She had a good name. Uh, till today, we are uh, talking about Ruth, praising her life. That is the fame she had. And uh, not only that, in her line, we know Obed was, Obed was born to her. And... Uh, uh, he was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. So in her, their genealogy, finally the Messiah came. It's a wonderful privilege he had. And um, uh, what, how is our legacy? You know, bringing salvation to the people. David was a man of God. The way they trained, Boaz and Ruth trained, you know, uh, Obed must have been a very good uh, boy. Then Jesse feared God, and then that's how... David was uh, fearing God, and uh, they had a very good godly legacy. And our purpose for our marriage is to bring up godly mm, offspring. In Malachi 3.15, we see that. So, uh, how do we bring up our children? How uh, can we bring salvation to the people? How our children can be a witness? They will be fearing God. They don't go away from God how they are going to really influence the people. Darkness is that, of course, uh, uh, first uh, Redeemer missed the opportunity that I, I you know, that uh, somebody else was supposed to be the kinsman the Redeemer. He refused, but uh, uh, Bo was accepted and he was uh, blessed. So uh, we need to be God has a pl plan for our lives. Make the right decision. What are you giving up for God? She gave up her house. What do you give up so that you can follow God? And uh, what uh, decision you have to make? That God has the priority in your life. What testimony people can tell about you? And uh, what kind of legacy you are leaving behind? Let God help us. A wise woman builds her house. But the, uh, with her own hands, the foolish tears us down. That's what, uh, let us be wise women, building our homes with all the character, changing into the image of the Lord Jesus so that we can be accepted into his kingdom.